floods, raging, tearing, irresistible, sweeping down on helpless communities. But what causes lie behind this annual destruction of lives and property? The mountain area of any community provides one of its most precious assets, worth millions to the residential sections in the hills and in the lowlands beneath. Whole cities often lie immediately below these hillsides. Beautiful homes and estates directly in the path of floodwaters. Floods are often regarded as acts of God, but why should man blame providence for his own shortcomings? Floods are usually the direct result of fire, and fire is almost invariably caused by man's carelessness. Let us show you. The campfire. Man's first step towards civilization, yet uncontrolled, it can easily destroy much of his later progress. The fire patrol car. An agency established by man to guard himself against his own carelessness. The alert fire patrolman has spotted a violation of the fire regulations. Educating the public is one of his major duties. Each car is a fire department in miniature, equipped to control minor fires. A campfire should never be left untended, even for a short time. And it should always be completely extinguished before leaving. Bury all embers using dirt that is free from combustible material. Pour on plenty of water and soak the ground well around the edges. Few forest fires start without human aid. Most of them are caused by just plain negligence. Careless smokers alone destroy millions of dollars worth of forests and other property each year. Fuel gas is rare in these areas, so ash disposal presents another problem. Very often, ashes that are supposedly cold retain smoldering embers that need only a slight breeze to fan them into menacing flames. Faulty incinerators cause many fires, and spark arresters, rusted away, are useless. Open rubbish fires are always dangerous, even in the wet season, and should never be left unguarded. Permits must be secured for all open fires, and in most places, there are specified hours for burning, hours when the humidity is the greatest. A burning cigarette heedlessly discarded could be the cause of untold damage. The thoughtless smoker drives away, the cigarette still smoldering. Another motorist, his mind intent on other matters. He carelessly tosses aside a lighted match and thus sows the seed of death and destruction. The seed sprouts, then blossoms into the deadly flower of conflagration. But vigilant eyes soon spot the result of his carelessness. Lookouts stationed at strategic points keep constant watch over our mountains and forests. Science steps in with map and fire finder to establish quickly the direction of the fire. But while the lookout knows the direction, he can only estimate the distance. He calls the Central Alarm Bureau and gives his reading. This bureau acts as a clearing station to coordinate and direct equipment properly. Added seconds now may save hours later. A string establishes the direction on the map. A second lookout discovers the fire. By using his finder, he determines the direction of the fire from this point. He phones in his reading. Two strings, a cross bearing, the exact spot of the fire calling the nearest patrol station. All information about the fire, its location, extent, and equipment necessary is transmitted to the mountain patrol station. With cool, unhurried efficiency, the veteran firefighter checks and double checks his instructions. But now is the time for speed. Dry 
high brush and low humidity. Ideal conditions for the rapidly spreading fire. Extra men are called from other stations. An emergency water tank, a pitiful thousand gallons to oppose this blazing holocaust. With such tanks few and far between. Water, plenty of it, is the only really effective weapon against fire. Civilians are recruited to aid the firefighters, but manpower alone is not enough. One modern fire engine can replace many men, but may be helpless without water. Strong winds add to the difficulties. Flying embers start new fires. Despite all efforts, the wind-driven flames get far beyond control. Valuable property is threatened. More help is badly needed. The heavy equipment rolls. Bulldozers for clearing brush, tractors for breaking trails, more men, more equipment to fight the worst fire they've had in years. Refugees standing helpless as the all-consuming flames sweep on toward their homes. The fire front, a living, surging wave of destruction, merciless, relentless, leaping, swirling down the mountainside. Cherished possessions, doomed for lack of transportation. Frame buildings and wooden shingled roofs, they can only wet them down and hope. Other refugees, innocent victims fleeing in dumb terror from the enemy which they recognize, but do not understand. A few moments ago, someone's home, now a blazing skeleton. Even the firefighters must retreat from the advancing inferno. As a last resort, a backfire is attempted. The bulldozer helps clear the way, doing the work of many men. Backfiring, fighting fire with fire, even by experienced men, is always dangerous. But with insufficient trails and motorways, with fire breaks neglected and overgrown, and above all, with the water supply limited, backfiring is often necessary. On another sector, the last flames are knocked down by our most potent weapon, water. The fire is nearly out, except for a few scattered remnants. But a dense pall of smoke still curtains the face of the sun. And then, in the wake of the fire, desolate ash-covered slopes, the graveyard of dead trees, where once there was green beauty, flowers, and charming homes. But this is not the end of the destruction. Here is a region ripe for deluge, floods, and soil erosion. The watershed is gone. Rainfall runoff of a brush-covered area is normally only 20%, but can be 80% in areas denuded by fire. Fire, then, is the prime cause of floods. By reasonable care, we can prevent fires and thus avoid floods. Metal receptacles should be provided for disposal of ashes. Be sure the lid is replaced and fits snugly. Incinerators should be of the approved type and in good repair. All cigarettes and burning tobacco should be extinguished and placed in metal receivers. Put it out, one match can summon the four horsemen of destruction. Fire the red enemy, drought the aftermath, flood the destroyer, and death the reaper.